I paid an extra $10 to get into a rummage sale an hour before it opened. Was it worth it? Did I walk out with all the vintage ceramic Christmas trees and the holy grail of t-shirts? Guess you'll have to stay tuned and find out. Oh, you got oh, to take it. Right. Okay. Go. Oh, we're all go. through here. Everybody got to take it. Take it. Take it.
That's a hug and bunch. No. So, as you can see from, from the clips, there were no vintage ceramic Christmas trees and there weren't any clothes. I don't, I don't even know what the holy grail of t-shirts would be. But if you know, let me know because then I'll be on the lookout for it. So was it worth spending an extra $10 to get into the sale early? It, I don't want to say it was a disappointment because I did find some things. I found one thing that I especially loved, but was it worth $10? I'm not sure. There was a good amount of jewelry there. I'm not so much into knowing what sells and what doesn't. I would pretty much just buy jewelry based on if I liked it or not. I, you know, I'm not there with a loop looking for the, the gold and the silver, though those that do, good for them because a truck. Anyway, good for them <laughs> because they know what they're doing and they can make, you know, great amounts of money just buying jewelry, but not me. So what did I buy? I bought some holiday, some things that I'll turn into holiday items. So I guess let's start off with either 4th of July, um, yeah, President's Day, one of those. What else is in here? Because it's heavy. Oh, jeez. Oh, her. I forgot I bought her. Okay, so I purchased a good old Abe. I forget what the reds were. Maybe a quarter, I think. I like the dot system. I think that that works well when each dot is a, each color dot is um, a different price. I like that. So I have Abe. I actually have an Abe bust that I purchased at an auction, I think for $5. So I usually put them up for 4th of July. So he will go to that collection. And then I bought this bell. This was a dollar. It's neat. Liberty Bell, maybe. Um, you know, it's definitely older bugs. I don't think it's like a fake reproduction piece. Oh, nice ring. So this is nice. You know, this could go out for 4th of July as well. This was a dollar too. 
this lady she doesn't have anything to do with the holidays but she was in there I did buy some little pieces I bought some pandas I think you may have saw me looking at them oh what else I don't know if I bought any of the dogs I don't recall but I bought her a nice Hawaiian woman and on the back she's marked 1940 with an H for Hawaii she has no other markings on the bottom but she has that great vintage look to her oh I'll get it right here eventually the great vintage look to her nice headband too what else what else oh these were the pandas I thought they were cute and they're a dollar too you know again these would be good online for probably fillers if you have an eBay store they do have some crazing so they are old but really cute faces they might have been no I think they were a dollar maybe 50 cents I don't know um I'm veering off from the holidays I did buy some books we have Walt Disney's Three Little Pigs the Churkin Deuce, <laughs> part chicken, turkey, duck, and goose. I thought that was turducken. Chicken, turducken. Maybe chicken's not in that. This is the Churkin Deuce. Some nighttime reading. But look at the colors. Ooh, they're right there. This is missing a page, but. The Churkin Deuce tap danced out of the hen house very sadly. Oh, he just wants some friends. Here we have a fox. Danny Beaver's Secret. I've never seen this one. Look how cute he is. Oh, it's by Richard Scarry. That's why it looked familiar. Richard Scarry was a great cartoon. I think in the 90s, Nickelodeon used to have The Busy World of Richard Scarry, and I loved it. But look, look how cute. Paint. Oh my gosh. Really cute. I've never seen this one either. So I picked up those. I also picked up this book. It's called Moon Trip. Oh my gosh, got it right here with these holding. There, no glare. Moon Trip. And I love, I like the color. And then the inside illustrations are very, you know, sci fi. 1959, 1958, 1959, sci-fi-ish. Let me see, it's that great green, there's a guy in a spaceship. So that was neat. I think the books, she may have charged me 10 cents a piece, I think it was. No, I did buy some jewelry, not a lot. I won't bore you with it all. I actually, this is the second one of these I have. It's a necklace with like nuts and shells. Great color. But what I do for this is I have, I've somewhat gotten a collection of white bases. A lot of them are um, whole, I think. I picked them up at yard sales at the flea market here and there between 50 cents to a dollar. So during the holidays, I like to fill them with things and these look great. So I will buy the fake acorns and the fake little pumpkins, put them in the vase and then I kind of lay this on top. It just has a great fall look. And you could wear it as a necklace too. Moving, well, no, going away from fall. We'll get back to fall. I purchased this guy. It was, I said hug a bunch, but it's not. It's shirt tails. These were from when I was little. His shirt says, I hug back. 1981 Hallmark. I vaguely remember them. I know there was a cartoon. I don't know if I was huge into the cartoon. I liked um, the Wuzzles. They were really good. Yeah, the Wuzzles. They were the mixture, two sets of fun wrapped up and rolled into one. <laughs> you cannot take the 80s out of me. All right, so to the holiday. It was disappointing. There was not a lot of vintage. Now for more modern day Christmas, go right on ahead. 
the first person in line, he buys vintage Christmas. So, you know, in line you get the, like the rummage sale sweats and you're like, oh my gosh, what's he gonna buy? What's he gonna go for? He actually went to the Pyrex first. So I was the first one in the Christmas section. So I'm trying to like scan all the shelves to see where the good vintage was. I missed one tree. It was an older tree, not a bottle brush, but it had the old um, ornaments on it. <sighs> there were the trees that looked like the ceramic trees, but they were napkin holders. I don't want them. But yeah, there were no ceramic Christmas trees. I thought for sure there would at least be one, but there is none. And the Halloween, there wasn't even that much of that either. So he picked up a lot of the Christmas. Go right on ahead. So I kind of just took my time looking at things. It, it wasn't that mad crazy rush where you're just grabbing and shoving stuff in your bag to get it, which was nice because it's nice to have that relaxed feeling and not so much anxiety and stress when you go to these rummage sales. You know, those that do this, go to rummage sales store stores to resell for their full-time job, I mean, that's stressful. That's stressful because you're spending your time there in line waiting, you get in, and what if there's nothing? Like, what money have you made that day? So, Halloween, three things, this, it's just a handmade napkin holder. But, you know, again, I, I think the reds were a quarter. It was under a dollar, I believe, I think. So, I'll swap him out with my napkin holder that I have now for Halloween. Why not? And then I did purchase two red dots were a quarter. I did purchase two pumpkins, a little one and a bigger one. Someone had asked how I know if they're vintage. The easiest way, of course, is to look on the bottom if it has the date. This is 1980 Carolina Enterprises. Same with this one. If they have, they could look like this and have a, a Walmart sticker on the bottom of the barcode. If you see a barcode, then they're most likely not the older kinds. And then the older, older jack-o'-lanterns, you know, you're gonna see them in like the cardboard or the paper mache. If you ever see the ones that are like a cat face with the eyes and it has a, I don't wanna say cellophane, but a piece of material or kind of paper, thin paper in between that's colored, grab those because those are great. So these, you know, I'm, for a quarter, you cannot, you can't leave them for a quarter. Even if when I go through my Halloween and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have too many of these, I could sell them at the flea market for a dollar to two dollars. Christmas, I only got two things. There were shiny brights there, but if you're going to resell shiny brights in my area, if I were to bring these to the flea market, Honestly, people would probably pay me $2 for this box because the ornaments, I'd be lucky if I could get five because the ornaments are not in that great of shape. You know, there's some issues. They're starting to lose color. I picked up, there were pink ones and then there was like a teal. I kind of wish I would have gotten a teal as well, but I didn't. I picked up the pink. This box says orange. Maybe at one time they were, but, oh, these would be good use for Valentine's Day. Let's see, multi-use. But I still like the boxes. If you come across just nice, shiny, bright boxes, or they're decent, you can make decor out of that too. Just stack them up. Maybe put like a ribbon around it or some nice, you know, brown, um, I wouldn't say rope, but, just stack them up that way. That's what I do on my old cupboard. I will stack shiny bright boxes that I have so you can see the different sides. And that looks great too. And then picked up this one. I think this was a quarter. Shiny brights. And there's just a different assortment inside. We have a manger scene. Merry Christmas. I love these little ones. Let's see this cute one. I only decorate my tree in vintage ornaments and I don't overload it. I like the more simple look. 
And my favorite find of the day that I will be keeping for myself would be Return to Oz Puzzle. And look, there's a moose. Or is that an elk? It's a moose on a bed. And you have Jack, the Pumpkin King, the Tin Man, Glinda. Was that the, the Glinda? Pretty sure that was the, the rooster, the chicken's name. TikTok, Scarecrow, and then the Lion. If you can see up close. I've talked about the Return to Oz movie before in 1985, Walt Disney Productions. I just love this movie. And you know, the puzzle on eBay, it goes for maybe $10. I think she charged me probably 10 cents. But I would never go on eBay and search for this and buy it for myself. So it was nice to find it in there. It was a really nice surprise. This is a great movie. I wish Disney would bring this back out to the theaters. You have the Wheelers. Um, Ozma with all her heads and then of course which I mentioned before my favorite part when Dorothy has to go and hold up these objects and say Oz and see if her friends the Scarecrow and, and Tin Man if they come back just a really good movie I mean it's a moose on the bed and a guy with a pumpkin head and sometimes the chicken sits in the pumpkin's head and looks out <laughs> It's just a great movie for my childhood. So finding this puzzle, was it worth the $10? Well, I would have paid $10 for it on eBay if I ever would have been looking for this puzzle. So I guess so. But a nice find, for me at least. So yeah, some holiday decor, some other little things. I'm paying $10 to go to the sale. Would I pay $10 to get into the sale early again? Most likely I would not. The sale that I would pay the extra ten dollars for was that one I went to a couple of months ago, where it had the tents and everything outside. That would totally be worth paying extra money to get in there early. But you know, you never know what you're going to find at a rummage sale, thrift store, flea market, and that is pretty much what makes this so much fun. It's because you never know when you might strike it big, or when you might come home only with one thing. Who knows? just never know. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends. Go check out Return to Oz. Great movie. Much better than the Garbage Pail Kids. <laughs> so yeah. Until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Thanks again for watching and I will see you all later.